Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at continuous current versus peak current versus average continuous current within a set period of time. We're gonna be diving into each one of those elements and ultimately understanding when should we be paying attention to one versus the other. It's quite critical for us to know exactly when we should be paying attention to these so that we know what to look for and we also know how it may actually damage the components of our radio control power system. Now our power system as we know are made up into three different components and that is our brushless motor, our brushless electronic speed control, as well as our lithium polymer battery pack. And we're going to look at exactly how these types of currents affect each one of those different components. Let's first start out by defining exactly what we mean by these types of currents that we're going to be reading. Let's start off with peak current. When we're discussing peak current, we're ultimately trying to understand the amount of current that we're pulling in an extremely short period of time. Generally speaking, this is less than three seconds. And if you're running speed run radio control vehicles, this is more than likely going to be a split second of time when you see these types of peaks occur. And then you're only having some average amount of current being drawn through the entire pull of your speed run. As it relates to the average current that we would pull within a run, this could be over the course of 20 seconds or so. And what would I would like to do is simplify this by tying this in with continuous current. When we talk about continuous current, we're gonna essentially say that if we're doing it over 20 seconds or the full entire duration of a radio control vehicle, we're gonna take both of those different buckets and we're gonna combine them into the same bucket and we're gonna call that bucket continuous continuous current. So ultimately in this video, we're going to be comparing continuous current versus peak currents and when we should be looking at each one of those independently for our application and for our components. Now we're considering these types of currents pulled within our system. Really what it comes down to is which component we are stressing and which one of those components is going to become the weakest link within our system. It's important that we're monitoring and checking in on the weakest link within our system because that is the one that is going to be the first failure point within the overall power system. And depending on what this is, there could be a significant difference. Let me know in the comments section below if you found this really relationship or if you found a different relationship within your power system. Generally speaking, an ESC is going to be able to heat up quick and also cool down quite quick. And when you look at a brushless motor or a lithium polymer battery pack, those types of power system components generally don't heat up and cool down as quickly. They hold their heat. And this is because they have a higher thermal capacity. As a result, these differences play a significant role in exactly how we monitor a system. Let's now discuss peak currents within a radio controlled power system. Peak currents is generally the more difficult approach or difficult item there to understand as it relates to the currents that we're ultimately measuring. And ultimately what it comes down to is that peak currents have the ability to have a very strong concentration of temperature within that that specific component. If you're imagining a brushless motor, this is very easy to imagine this type of thing, the windings within that brushless motor, that's the first element that's going to become hot within that brushless motor. And it takes a long time for that heat to actually propagate to the outside of the motor. And this is generally where we pick up the temperature on a sensor, whether we're trying to read it or we're waiting for a sensor inside the motor to actually gain heat. Now this is going to be shared in the example that I show you here very shortly. Shortly. When it comes to a lithium polymer battery pack, the same idea, except it's different components. It might be the internal chemistry that's happening. Those specific components inside the battery cell get hot before you actually are able to read a temperature on the outside of a battery. Then when you begin to reduce the load in your power system, you're going to decrease the amount of heat in that concentrated local area of the specific component. In an ESC, this would be the FETs that would see quite a bit of heat as you are pulling lots of power from them. Continuous current is a lot easier for us to be able to understand, and it of course is a lot easier to pick up on a data log or if you're using measuring tools to measure the temperature on any one of these power system components. 
Let's now talk about radio control vehicle applications and match that up to the type of current that we should be measuring for each one. We can really make this simple by spreading it into two different categories. One is bashing as well as running your radio control vehicle. Maybe you run your radio control vehicle at wide open throttle. There's a couple examples that we can talk about here on what those are, or maybe you don't do that at all. You're using partial throttle, mixed throttle for the entire duration of your run. If you're doing that, you can essentially take Take those types of radio control vehicles and bucket them under the continuous current readings. This is the amount of current that you should be focused on and you don't need to be concerned about the peak currents that you're going to be pulling. Now if you're running a high speed type vehicle, whether it's a radio controlled airplane or a radio controlled boat or radio control car, this is where you really want to start to focus. And when we talk about high speed, this is where you're able to pierce for a very small fraction of time into some insane amounts of speed. If this is the type of radio control vehicles you are operating and the type of racing that you're doing, you are definitely going to want to focus in on looking at peak currents within your setup. Let's now jump into a real world application so we can visually see exactly what is going on here. We're going to look at peak currents as well as continuous current type examples. We're going to take a look at this graph here and we're essentially going to relate this graph to the idea behind continuous current and analyzing this graph based off of the continuous current type theory. Now later we're going to get into another graph that represents the current that we're going to pull when we are doing speed runs and that's going to be peak current that we're going to be analyzing there in that specific graph. We'll also look at what continuous current might be for that run and compare the differences between the two. So it's important to note here that we're measuring only two parameters. The first parameter being the current that you see here in green jumping up and down all over the place. And the second parameter is temperature. Now keep in mind the temperature here is of the ESC only. We would have to do another temperature current analysis for the motor as well as the lithium polymer battery pack to know that those specific power system components are okay when when we're drawing this type of current here in this model. This model is a cub, it's a 2.1 meter using the, an upgraded power system that draws about 2100 watts and it's an airplane that comes from Horizon Hobby. So we're seeing right away that we're starting off with an ESC temperature just above the 30 degrees Celsius mark and then we take off and we can see that the, the current jumps up a little bit and then it comes back down as we get into the air and we settle in and then we actually make a corner and we come back at 100% throttle. Now we make a bunch of, you know, passes at higher speeds and then we slow down pulling zero current. What I want to do is I want to look at this specific area of the graph. And the reason why this is important is because in this area, we are seeing that the temperature really doesn't increase much beyond this. This lets me know that if we're at 55.6 degrees Celsius on the ESC here, if we were to maintain maximum current, which is going to be this 85 amps, we would more than likely not see anything more than 60 to 65 degrees Celsius, which is well within the threshold for this specific ESC in this airplane under these circumstances in this type of environment. It's important to add on all these other elements because if you take this 100 amp rated ESC and pull 85.8 amps, but you're not allowing it to cool correctly by having an airflow over the ESC, you may actually be able to overheat the ESC. So it's important to take a look at your graphs and understand truly what's happening under these continuous current type scenarios. This is what we're doing to evaluate this graph. This system checks out because we see that we have some stability here in this setup. Now, if you don't see the same things that I'm seeing within this graph, what I would highly recommend is pulling the throttle and holding it for a longer duration of time if you do intend to do that to know if your power system is going to be up to the challenge. And if you do that and you see that the temperature is spiraling, spiraling out of control, then you may want to you know, look into your system and see what differences or changes that you can possibly do. Let's jump into a different graph. This is probably the more exciting graph here that we're gonna look at. This is a speed run that we've done and this is an unconventional way to do a speed run. In fact, this made me very uncomfortable when I was doing this speed run because I got the motor up to a temperature and this temperature is 82.6 degrees Celsius and I've never had a motor hit this kind of temperature in my entire life. So this was not something very comforting for me, but I did it because I recorded a video and you can watch that video. I think I posted a couple years ago where I make back-to-back -back passes in a speed run vehicle. Here's the graph that represents that. 
So what I wanna bring your attention to is we're doing the same thing except now we're adding the motor temperature and we're monitoring motor temperature. And I want to show you, these are the spikes that we're seeing and we're only holding full throttle for only a few seconds, three to six seconds maximum, where it's gonna be at that maximum current for only a few seconds and it hits an absolute peak within a split second. So we're really not talking a lot of time when we're actually drawing this kind of power. If you look at the average, the average is actually showing 24.8 amps. And if you tried to make out what the continuous current here is, it's extremely difficult to do over the course of 400 plus seconds of time here when we're looking at this graph. And over the 400 seconds in time, we do see a motor temperature that gets awfully hot to the point where it made me uncomfortable. So what are we trying to understand here? Well. There's a couple things going on, and as we pull this peak current here, we are seeing that the ESC is jumping in temperature, and it jumps in temperature to the point where it comes to this peak, and then it begins to cool off, and even though we're still pulling some amount of power, it's not really increasing in temperature at all because it can handle it. And then we make a pull again, and we see that temperature spike up, and then it cools off again. But what's happening to the brushless motor as we're doing that? The brushless motor doesn't really respond to this peak. What actually happens is, even though we're pulling a negligible amount of power in this area, the amount of power or temperature that we're seeing in the brushless motor is increasing significantly over time, even though we're pulling that insignificant power. So what's happening? I want to bring your attention back to what we talked about earlier in this video, because it's very important. When we pull extreme peaks of current in a brushless motor, lithium polymer battery pack, or ESC, we can get that high concentration of temperature in a specific element within that component. In the brushless motor, it's very easy for us to understand. It's the windings within the motor that get hot and they get extremely hot, much hotter than even the maximum temperature you're seeing way over here. We're probably over 100 degrees Celsius quite easily in this time when we're pulling this type of power. And then what happens when we let off the throttle is all that heat propagates and begins to travel in throughout the rest of the motor and it sinks itself through the motor and this is where we're able to measure temperature on the case and this is where the sensor within here is able to measure the differences as it begins to heat up that sensor area wherever that sensor happens to be mounted. This is the very important critical point. If it was an electronic speed control that can't handle this type of peak power, even though the continuous current would be relatively low, you can actually destroy the FETs within an electronic speed control by having concentrated amounts of heat, even though the ESC, what you would measure in a data log, is not getting anywhere close to the temperature of what those FETs are getting. So it's important to note that peak current places a stress load on your components that you are not always able to see through the temperature sensors and other types of sensors that you're using on those components. And as you can see here, even though we're only pulling, let's say if we add up every one of these 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36 seconds. We got about 36 seconds where we're pulling a significant amount of power, but outside of that, we got 400 seconds where we're not, and we still hit a maximum temperature that is above and beyond what I would deem safe for this brushless motor. Now, I can assure you that if we pulled 24.8 amps with this motor and we left it on for an hour, we're not gonna be seeing temperatures of 82 point something degrees Celsius. We're gonna see temperatures that are much lower than 80 degrees Celsius. And that's because these peak currents are stressing our components to a high degree. In this specific setup, the motor is definitely the component here that is our weakest link. Well guys, I hope you ended up learning something from this specific video where we look at current and being able to take away something so you can apply it to your everyday radio control vehicle needs. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.